I called out my husband's name and all I heard was a woman's voice. Who the hell are you? What is your relationship with Sean? Huh? My name is Mia, 30 years old, and I'm a company employee. My husband Sean and I have been married for two years. We got along quite alright and were having a normal married life. But one day, I found out my husband's true nature. It all started when I came down with a terrible fever. I went to work that day. I was getting sicker and sicker, dizzy and nauseous. I started shaking and sweating a lot, and my forehead was extremely hot. I thought I had a fever, so I told my boss that I wanted to leave early. I was so dizzy, but I managed to buy something to drink, some fruits, and some over the counter cold medicine on the way home. As I was lying in bed, it was just time for lunch, so I called my husband. Hey, what's up? I'm sorry to call you during work. I left work early because I was feeling really sick and I just checked my temperature and it was 100 degrees. So, will you please come home as soon as you can? I usually try to manage to get through things on my own and try not to bother my husband as much as possible. But that day I was really sick and I thought it may be dangerous if I stayed home alone. So I asked my husband to stay by my side. But my husband gave me a reply I didn't expect. Huh? I don't want to do that. I'm staying out tonight because I don't want to get sick too. What? Wait a minute. I'm not feeling well, so my voice has no strength. My husband then hung up on me, saying that the lunch break was over. I was more worried about my health than being shocked at my husband's words and cold attitude, so I hurriedly called my sister who lives nearby. I'm about to collapse in the house with a high fever, so can you help me? My sister came right away and took me to the hospital immediately. According to the diagnosis, I had not only a cold, but also a stomach ulcer. When I went to the hospital, the fever was more agonizing, so I didn't pay that much attention to it, but I did have a throbbing sensation in my stomach for a few days. The nausea was also very bad, and I wondered if it was caused by a stomach ulcer and not a cold. As a result, I ended up in the hospital for a few days. I was so sick that day that I slept like a stone in my hospital bed. The next day, I called my work and explained the situation. My boss apologized and said, I'm sorry, I may have given you too much work recently. Take a good rest. I didn't feel like I was pushing myself that hard, but maybe I was stressed about various matters. But it wasn't just about work. I was also doing most of the housework by myself. My husband had lived at his parents' home for a long time and was not good at housework. When we first got married, I had told my husband that I wanted to share the housework with him because we both worked, and he agreed. However, my husband gradually began to slack off on the housework. As a result, the house was dirty and his cooking was not good. When he served me instant noodles for dinner, I thought he was trying to pick a fight with me. Even when I offered to teach him how to cook and clean the house, he was too lazy to try to learn. So it became a matter of course that I did the housework every day. I always like to keep my apartment clean myself, and I also want to cook properly because I like to eat well. Unconsciously, I gave up on my husband and felt that it would be faster if I did it myself. I think I was pushing myself too much and putting a lot of strain on my body. I took my job very seriously and took responsibility for it, so I must have overworked my body even more. 
I tried to call my husband to let him know I was in the hospital, but my phone was dead. I tried to call his office from the hospital phone, but I couldn't remember his phone number, so I could not call him. I couldn't remember his phone number because I always called him on my cell phone. This is one of those times when I feel the times are changing. I had no choice but to wait for my sister to bring me a change of clothes and other necessities and call him from her phone. Then, around 6 pm, my sister came to visit me after she finished her work. I brought you a change of clothes and an iPad. Thank you. She's a very thoughtful sister. With the iPad, I could pass the time watching movies and such. As I remembered, I borrowed my sister's phone and called my husband. It rang for a while, but my husband doesn't answer. Maybe he hasn't come home yet. Maybe he's still on the train. I was about to hang up the phone to call him again a little later. Then the phone picked up, so I put the phone quickly to my ear. Hello, Sean. When I called my husband's name, I heard a woman's voice. Who are you and what is your relationship with Sean? What? I see your name on the phone as Kate Sanders, but you're not dating Sean, are you? I understood at this point. I'm just a friend. Okay, you're a friend. Are you Sean's girlfriend? Yes, I'm his girlfriend. But Sean has a wife, right? Oh, you know all that. But that's none of your business. You're just a friend. Yeah, that's right. What do you want from Sean? Oh no, it's no big deal. I don't want to interrupt your time, so I'll call another time. With that, I hung up the phone. My sister, who was standing beside me, awkwardly asked me, Is Sean like. It seems he's having an affair. That's disgusting! I was convinced that's why he was so cold when I called him yesterday and asked him to come home early. Perhaps the adulterer picked up the phone thinking it was a different woman because it wasn't my name on the screen. I was thankful that my phone was uncharged. I would have never known about the affair if I hadn't made the call from my sister's phone. Later, after charging my own phone, I called my husband to tell him I was in the hospital. He replied that he was worried about me, but that he couldn't visit me because he didn't want to get sick, so he sent me a message telling me to take care of myself. I couldn't help but laugh. He's a scumbag of the scum on the planet for not coming to visit his wife in the hospital and having an affair with an adulterer. I said, Okay, I'll call you when I get out of the hospital. This gave me some time to plan things. In fact, I was recovering quite well and was supposed to be discharged the same day I sent my husband the message. However, I wanted to keep the divorce preparations confidential, so after leaving the hospital, I stayed at my sister's house to take care of the divorce papers, arrange for a lawyer, hire a detective agency, and to see a new apartment. After all the preparations were done, I called my husband and told him I was discharged from the hospital and went home. My husband, whom I hadn't seen for a long time, looked at me with a nonchalant face and said, Oh my god, it was such a hard time. I'm so glad you're out of the hospital. The only thing was that it had taken a few days to get the results from the detective agency, so I had to hold on and act calm. A few days later, I finally got the information about the adulterer, so I confronted my husband with the divorce papers and said, I want a divorce. What? He didn't seem to understand why he was confronted with the divorce papers. Why? 
I don't understand the meaning of a sudden divorce. Ask yourself, what are you talking about? I don't get it. You're just going to keep on pretending, aren't you? You must be very close to a woman named Julia Smith. As soon as I mentioned her name, he turned pale and started to get upset. What? She's just a junior colleague. What do you suspect? There's no point in hiding it anymore. I made him listen to an audio recording from my sister's phone of the adulterer making a statement in which she admitted that she was seeing my husband. My husband seemed to realize there was no way to get away with it, so he admitted to the affair. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Forgive me. I don't want a divorce. Don't be silly. I don't care what you think. The only reason you don't want a divorce anyway is because you want the money I earn and someone to do the housework. It was right on and my husband couldn't say anything else. But he was adamant about not getting a divorce, so I sent a certified letter to his workplace urging him to agree to a divorce. Incidentally, I also sent a content certified letter to the adulterer at the same workplace, so it seems that the people at work completely knew about their relationship. Sean was furious and called me. Hey, you've caused a big problem at work. What are you gonna do about it? How are you going to take responsibility? What a scumbag. Of course you're responsible for your own actions. If you don't sign the divorce paper soon, we'll have to take you to court. Court? How long do you think you can keep putting up the money to fight in court when you earn less than me? Just give up and sign the divorce papers. I'm going to charge you guys for alimony, of course. Damn. My husband finally gave up and signed the divorce papers, and the divorce was settled. After that, I filed for alimony against my ex-husband and his adulterous partner, and they both paid me $20,000 each. He was too much of an asshole to take the chance to meet with the adulterer when his wife was sick with a fever. I wish I could get more alimony, but this seemed to be the limit, so I had to compromise. But it seems that my ex-husband had a miserable life after that. At work, of course, he took a pay cut and was transferred to another department. The affair partner resigned voluntarily because she couldn't stand the gossip. But it didn't end there. When my ex-husband was walking alone at night, the affair partner's brother and his friend approached him and beat him up. The affair partner's brother seemed to be a bit of a troublemaker, and my husband was badly injured. I'm sorry he got hurt a lot, but I guess he got what he deserved for having an affair. I, on the other hand, used the alimony from my divorce as a down payment to buy a condo. I am now living in a very comfortable house and enjoying the single life. I made a mistake in the choice of Mary's partner, but in the future, I hope to be able to make a more proper assessment and find a wonderful man. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you like. See you in the next video.